and face that this world has forgotten. What's up guys? Now, before going into the course of the Wi-Fi battle of the day, I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm actually started a Discord group called The Battle, which clearly is an invitation that I want you guys to join it. It's going to be linked down below. And it's basically it's a way of you to actually, of course, battle me, but also battle other players in, of course, the Pokemon community. The purpose of this channel or Discord group is basically to gather people that want to battle by Smoke and Tears. So feel free to join us, and, well, I'll see you guys there. Ooh, what is up, guys? And, of course, welcome back to actually an OU Wi-Fi battle with the truly, of course, Scarender. And, yeah, OU is not really my thing, as you guys may or may not know. Not the strongest OU player, but because Sceptile got released, that means I want to test stuff. And there is a really, really strong thing that I really want to try for some time with Mega Sceptile, because it does get nature power, and nature power is heavily affected on, of course, the terrains. And with, of course, the Pokemon using terrains as a factor, and, of course, an ideal place here. So we're using both Fina and Koku to get, actually, nature power that becomes Moonblast or Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is especially more interesting since, of course, Skarmory and Celestial are in the tier. So, yeah, Sceptile is awesome. Really, really wanted to use it for quite some time. I'm glad it's around. Other than that, we have Electric Seed, Digger Speed, basically a more defensive variant to get it with a Bus Wall and actually AV Tornadoes. Um, the team will change a little bit. I just want to try a concept. Like I said, I know nothing in OU. Uh, I don't intend to get a lot better in OU because I do suck in it. It's it's not going to go away. But yeah, we're facing up against Noster and a very, very impressive team here with, of course, Dragonite, Swampert, Stormy. Mega Beedrill, that has to be the Mega Beedrill, right? There's no reason I'm using it, I want. And of course, Yurashi and Tabakoku. So, two Tabakokus on the field, which means that much more Thunderbolt, but not a team that necessarily are weak to Electric. So, it's unfortunate, but you know, it's alright. You know, we'll, we'll figure out things as we go. But yeah, other than that, you know, I'm gonna lead up with Tornadoes. It's a safe lead here. We're only, of course, Tabakoku out speeding it. Outside of that, the Mega Beedrill could be a major issue for my team. Well, that should be kind of fine. So, anyway, let's, of course, go into the match. So Nasri will lead with his Dragonite, and that's okay. It can definitely set up a Dragon Dance here, and if it does, it's unfortunate. But I'm just going to go for a U-turn, because all I really want is to break his uh, Marvel scale. And actually switch this out, not wanting to actually break it, and that's definitely respectable. Let's go for a U-turn, and I definitely do, you know, decent damage. Definitely shows me it's probably more special defensive, since I have no investment whatsoever. But anyway, we're going to send in Malik, of course, the Mega Sceptile. And Malik, of course, is for the Tales of Graces. And the guy who, who, who has an over limit attack that it says a man speaks with his back. So, yeah, kind of a reference to that guy, Malik the man. So, anyway, we're gonna make a ball, but of course, Yurashi, it's a very good switching. Yurashi definitely makes sense. Uh, and without Earthquake, I'm pretty much um, powerless against this Pokemon. Giga Rain actually does a lot on it anyway, which kind of means that he's definitely like more offensive variant. So, I'm gonna switch out, hoping for rocks or some kind of weird play. But it's smarter than that, and actually goes for a U-turn, and that's definitely good. Since it's a Scarf variant anyway, it will make sense for the ground of the towards the matchup. So he's gonna send in his Dragonite, and I was thinking, alright, this is gonna go for Dragon then, that's okay. We're gonna go for an Ice Punch, break his sturdy, I still digger speed with, of course, Quick Attack, I should be able to deal with it from there on out. Well, it's special, and not only that, he, he goes for Hurricane, and he does connect with it, and he actually O-Coast my Gorehots, or my Bus Wool, and that's... Unfortunate, it really is, as I'm forced to switch in Araxi here, and it really is really nothing I can do. Araxi is not potentially a threat for a Dragon Dance variant of the Dragonite, but it can break his third, which he actually keeps intact at yet again and gets out. Let's go for Nature Madness. Sadly, I do miss it, and that kind of stings. I'm actually forced here to stay in. Here's where I realize I'm super weak to poison, and that the Mega Beedrill is possibly sweeping me from here on out. As he actually surprisingly enough goes for Toxic Spikes, so that's okay. Uh, we go for a safe surf here, and we don't do the 50% that I was hoping for. And um, I actually find out there's a roll later on, but it doesn't necessarily matter. But missing Nature Madness, yeah, it sucks. As I'm gonna send in Rain Bront, and due to actually the um, terrain I will uh, that is affected before it lands, of course, being the um, Misty Terrain, I won't be affected by. Uh, uh, or what do you call it? Um, the Toxic Spike, but I get Oko by Poison Jab, so you know what it is, as I'm forced to send in Malik. Malik can easily go for Thunderbolt if I so desire, and that is what I do, because Yurashi is such an easy switch in here, that it makes tons of sense of sending it in. 
as you guys will see a massive amount of damage from the monster, the beast that is Mega Sceptile. Sadly, it isn't an Oko, even if it's boosted by the terrain itself, but I should be able to carry it next turn. But it is a Scarf variant and it goes from Iron Head and it does do a, there, a, a decent amount of damage onto him actually, as the Thunderbolt will wrap up here. And um, I am not in a good spot, I really aren't. Uh, because the poison will wheel me down and uh, extreme speed is very likely to pick me up from the Dragonite. And I don't necessarily have a switch in here. My best bet is go to my Tapu Lele, I was going to say, but Tapu Fidi. And basically try to soak. But of course, due to the Toxic Spike, I will be affected first by the spikes before the terrain sets off. I actually learned this by actually looking at this battle. It's kind of impressive. So anyway, extreme speed doesn't do a whole lot, which is kind of... Kind of enforcing one thing, I should definitely switch this on when, of course, boss hole was a, wasn't a match. Losing boss hole sucks, uh, as there's still nothing to do outside of, of course, breaking the study. Now, he will actually go for Fly MC, and he is actually C Hurricane. So, I am defensive, not special defensive, so there is really nothing I can necessarily do. I can't possibly survive it, because Dragonite does not have the strongest special attack, but at the same time, I will take a heavy amount of damage, and what makes this worse is that I went for a surf, thinking that Peter will come in trying to soak, of course, a uh, possible uh, Moonblast. So, we, we break the Marvel scale, but we really aren't breaking anything here, because Dragonite is still as active, still as scary as ever, and I can easily be picked up now again by Extreme Speed. So Dragonite becomes more dangerous and more dangerous as we go, as the Mega Beetle comes in and... Uh, well, I went for Moonblast, and uh, as you guys can see, that, that, that doesn't do anything. So, um, yeah, I'm basically forced to say, as I stated here before, I don't have to sell that switch, and the poison do kind of rack up, and eventually takes a toll on me. So, it is unfortunate to go for a U-turn here, and my team is pretty much whittled down to a Tornado, Sceptile, and the Digger's B. And the Digger's B can only be effective, if anything, if the electric terrain is up. If it's not, then it's going to be less of a threat to toss him. So, he's going to send in Dragonite's. Uh, so I am forced now to, of course, lead off with my Voralis, and um, I'm gonna speed this up a bit, because Hurricane could very well two-shot two him, actually, but his special defensive Swampert is more likely to deal with this matchup. But the thing is here, the Swampert can't necessarily do anything to me, and I don't necessarily do anything to him, and uh, basically what's gonna happen here is uh, a series of attacks that may or may not do damage <laughs> because I'll actually start missing the hurricanes as he gets the skull and he gets the skull burn I actually connect I do believe three or four uh, hurricanes that don't get a confusion he gets the burn I do believe second time he uses the skull so that's that kind of sucks I really 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 needed that confusion or something to let me off the hook here but sadly that did not come to fruition and um, I kind of needed that I needed some kind of lead way to actually pull this off uh, because at this time, Digger B is my only win con, and I, I can only, of course, capitalize on Digger B if the train is up, so I need to bait in Koku. But since my HP is so low, it's very likely that, yet again, the extreme speed on the Dragonite will actually be the one to wrap up, and that really sucks. Um, and as you guys will see, due to, of course, my amount of HP, Dragonite is the switch in here, and as I stated, it sucks. Dragonite out of nowhere becomes a monster and the fear, the most feared monster that I have been forced to be dealing with and gets picked up with extreme speed and that really, really, really stinks as I'm gonna bring Tum Tum and uh, I mean all I can do here is go for a return earthquake, no not necessarily earthquake, but definitely return and try to do as much damage as possible. Now he's probably fearing I was scarfed. I'm not. The electric seed is a very, very gimmicky variant of a digger speed and I probably won't use it ever again. Because I thought it did something different than boost my defenses, to be honest. I thought it boosted speed, so it, it really is a weird set. As it sends in Stami, um, and the only thing I can do to disarm me is go for a knockoff, hoping I survive a Skull. They actually go for an Ice Beam, I would not be able to survive a Skull, but I do survive, of course, Ice Beam. But what is unfortunate is that, due to that amount of damage, I won't be able with my Mega Sceptile to deal with, of course, Dragonites, because I needed some way to get HP back on my Sceptile with Giga Drain, and both Stormy and Swampert are gone, which means that, well, so pretty much am I. So he's gonna send in Tapu Koku, and I'm just gonna, I, I really just wanted this matchup, so I at least can throw off a Leaf Storm, because guys, you can see, Sceptile got a new animation. It actually is now shooting its tails. Look at this while Leaf Storm is going, and here we go, here's the tail, boom! <laughs> and there we go, and that is actually due to the poison, 
a 1-0 victory in Nasser's favor and a very, very fair 1-0 in his favor. He played his game excellent. So yeah, you know, I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not an OU player and I don't believe this team was a heavy OU team. So I definitely believe had I faced um, a caliber such as, of course, my opponents here with a more statuarized OU team, I would get him blown away. And the thing is, on paper, my team looks fairly good, but actually lacking a steel type is very, very much damaging me. Uh, I lack priority too, and it's, it's kind of a weird structure, so I, I figured out something to kind of work around it. But uh, Mega Sceptile is definitely a Pokemon to be reckoned with. It is going to be a Yuyumon, but in a sense of Nation, mainly because of its um, move pool in general. But if you want to capitalize on it in you know, OU, using nature power now is more relevant than ever. You know, Psychic Terrain, but of course, Hasten of Psychics is very, very good against Poison types. You could possibly wall it uh, outside, of course, the Mach, which definitely is a wall in Sceptile no matter what. Now, Sceptile can learn Earthquake and can be capitalized on. But I really just like the concept. I really like being able to throw a Thunderbolt, Moonblast, and a possible Energy Ball, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, you could capitalize on that, having Bull on your team and have Earthquake anyway. Um, but the Earthquake will be reduced in damage, which is unfortunate. But yeah. The ideas are there, and I encourage everything to be worked with Sceptile here, because it's a strong Pokemon of this generation. That It got the necessary buff it needed, and I'll, I love it. I love every second of it. So, yeah, anyway, guys, of course, as always, so much for watching, and thank you, Nasser, for the game. It was incredible. Nice going, buddy. And, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.